No, he hadn't gone far, they were just hiding under something. If I can grab that spring with my pliers, stretch it out, hook it over that post there, stretch it out, and get it into place. So this lever now catches into position. That looks good. So the touch of molybdenum paste on this detent spring here and these little teeth ratchet corrugations on that bracket flip this over I want to get this in position with that pin behind the spring on the screw that holds the B lever there, that's sitting correctly in, pl in place. Here's the shim piece, goes in there, get that seated, that's good. Here is the setting lever for the aperture. And there are three screws that hold this in place. One was a bit reluctant to start. I had to uh, back it up and have about three attempts at getting it to start correctly. That one went straight away, no arguments. This is the third of them. You can see my screwdriver is magnetised, it's making it a bit awkward to get things to go where I want them to go. Alright. Check that the aperture moves smoothly. That's good. No resistance there to speak of. That should be fine. If there's any stiffness at that point, there are two, two main reasons you may have stiffness. One is there may be some roughness in there. And that friction will make this lever a bit stiff to move. Often you can tell that if you sort of push it towards the centre of the shutter and you move it, you feel stiffness. And if you pull it away from the shutter and move it, you feel no stiffness. Certainly there's a little bit of roughness in that point. What I'm going to do there is put a little touch of graphite powder in around those three screw heads. And just move, just swing that lever backwards and forwards. Just work it in. That's all that's required typically. Now let's go and blow that powder off the excess. And that's it. Nice and nice and smooth. Three in its action. Alright, some more of this stuff. Put a wipe of some of molybdenum through that centre of that piece. It's spring loaded. Swing it round, it latches into position down in here. And I want to get my flash contact in place. The moving flash contact sits on top of that piece. That's seated correctly. Now if I cock this part, it allows that flash contact to move back out of the way. And so it's not in the way of the latch mechanism here. And I can get that seated correctly. Looking for the screws for this. All right. One plain screw at this end.
a return spring and a shoulder screw at the other end. And I'm looking for the shoulder screw now because it wasn't in that container. It can't be far away. That'll be in. I want to see if I can get that started in the hole, otherwise it'll be awkward. That'll do. Run that screw down. Make sure that the spring is free to revolve around the, collet, the uh, shoulder on that screw, like that. Tighten that screw up. And I've got to hook that spring into position. So I lift it up above that arm, take it around the back of the arm, there's a little notch in the back of this arm that that spring seats into. You can see that's sprung loaded now. Here's my shutter release lever. I'll give that a wipe with some naphtha just to clean it. Given the oiliness of this shutter, everything's a bit suspect. That lever in place. Make sure it hooks under the B lever at this point. I've got to tuck its spring in down to the inside of the case. I'm just pushing that round with a screwdriver tip. That drops into position. You can see now that it lifts this latch lever. That looks good. Now it's going to check my B lever latches incorrectly. Yeah, it does. If the flash contact's not bent correct, if it's bent out of shape, you may end up with a situation where the flash contact is so stiff that it don't, the blade actuating ring doesn't want to move around far enough for the B lever to drop into place. It certainly appears to be okay. That's good. At this stage, well I'm down really to putting in the main drive cam and the main drive and the main spring. Well the cam is here and the spring I'd almost, I'd already sort of condemned the spring as being too gutless. But um, I'll put the cam in, we'll put the spring in and see how it behaves with a freshly cleaned shutter because quite likely it'll work alright. That's not a reason to use that spring because I can tell that it's not really any good but it'll prove that we've made a significant difference with the cleaning and lubrication. So I'll just run some molybdenum disulfide paste through the centre there and some of these edges need to be helped to. This curved edge here is where it engages with the retard gear train and that needs to have some molybdenum on it because if you have a high friction surface there it loads up the cocking rack when the shutter's been cocked. It doesn't make much difference to how it runs down but it loads it up when it's been cocked. I'll get this spring in position even though we know it's gutless. Hook it into position. It's, it's so gutless it hardly even hooks into place. But if we cock this cock that spring, do we get shutter? Yes we do. So certainly it would work. I just happen to know that that spring is just gutless. See it's hardly got enough oomph to have enough tension to even stay hooked in place. So I'm going to have to find a better example than that. I can probably do something. Well this spring certainly has more tension. You can see how I had to stretch that out in order to get it to clip into place. And that'll probably work fine. That's not an ideal spring, but then again there aren't many ideal springs that are 60 years old, so we'll say that that's going to be the one to use. 
And what difference would it make? Well, in an ideal world with the a correctly tensioned spring, you could say that you are likely to get something like the top rated speed for the shutter, which in this case was a 500th of a second. In practice, it was never much better than a 400th of a second, even with a new spring, even with a freshly serviced shutter. With a sort of fairly tired spring, probably a 350th would be a good target. Um, anywhere between that 350 and 400th of a second, I'd say, would be a very good result for that 500th of a second speed. Anyway, this is all looking good. I need to clean and fit my gear trains now, the self-timer and the retard gear train. So I've got to go and put them through the ultrasonic cleaner. Ten, now I'll get 10 minutes in naphtha and that should clean them well. Well, I've just cleaned the retard gear train and the self-timer in the ultrasonic cleaner and naphtha. Pulled them out, blew away all the solvent and so forth. Dried them with air and uh, then lubricated them lightly with graphite powder. And so now they should work well. At least that's the theory. Proof of the pudding will be in the eating. And there's the other one. Need to get the screws in there. Get that started. Make sure this lever is pulled back so it's not trapped on top of the lobe on the blade actuating ring. That lobe on the blade actuating ring pushes this lever back out of the way. Yeah, tighten that screw up. What happens when we release the shutter? It runs down, times out quite nicely. It seemed a bit quick to me, so obviously I need to adjust my speeds. I'll just put a touch of molybdenum and paste down that front surface of that cam there, that lever. Oh, yes, that is running a bit quick. So we need greater engagement of the retard gear train with the cam here so I need to move it inwards so there's greater engagement. That's quite a long way to move it. Let's try that. Yeah that certainly starts, sounded slower. That's probably a good place to start. And the self timer. Let's cut this. Does that run down? Certainly does. That seemed pretty good too. And we'll try that again. Sounds good to me. Good enough to carry on with anyway and I'll have to uh, check my speeds after that. So I need to clean this piece which is sort of the, come on video camera hurry up, this piece which is the internal cocking rack I suppose you'd call it. It actually cocks, takes the action from the outside of the shutter, cocks the main drive spring here through the pinion that drops in and moot cocks this flash sync mechanism at the same time. Where's the pinion? There it is. I'll just clean these two parts and pop those in place. Let's just do that now. A bit of naphtha here would do the job. There's a little bit of graphite grease from the the previous assembly here. I'm just removing all of that because I want to remove 
all the dust that might be trapped in the grease. These require very little in the way of lubrication. I was, a light wipe on that pinion will do nicely. And that drops in here. The tab on the pinion drops in here. In that space between here and the spring basically. And this piece I'll just run some wipe, some molybdenum paste around the inner surface, around the outer surface and that'll do me. And we'll put this in position. So I've got to get the spring hooked over that post. Swing this into position making sure that the teeth are engaged correctly with this pinion. Now I'm one tooth out there. That's better. So that the last tooth on the pinion engages with the first first tooth on the pinion engages with the first tooth there. I'll put the shutter speed setting cam plate in position. I'm just setting that round at the eighth of a second position. See how that goes. And I can tell you that's much too fast. So I need greater engagement of the retard gear train with the main drive cam, which means I've got to swing the end of it inwards slightly. Only very slightly. That was quite a long way. We'll see how that does for us. Pinion and one tooth out again. Let's get that back where it should be. That's better. Put the plate on the top. Eighth of a second. What do we get? That sounds credible. It might be a bit quick. What's it like on a fifteenth? All right, I'll check those. I think that's slightly fast, but I want to test that. I'll just put that retainer ring on the front to keep everything in position and check what they sound like or look like on my shutter speed tester. Well, they're a full stop too fast, so so much for my estimation powers. I don't think I can swing that any closer. That did sound quite fast for a second. What's that like for a second? too fast. Can I really got any, not get any more movement out of that? Let's have another go. No, that's up hard against its stop. I can get no more out of that. There's a couple of other adjustments possible. One is here. You can change the amount of physical engagement of the pallets with the pallet wheel. And the second one is here with this pin that follows the cam plate here. You can bend the pin inwards which would speed up the shutter because basically it would pull the arm further out. Or you can bend it outwards, which will allow the arm to fall further in and slow the shutter up. Now the pin looks vertical. 
So that should be a fairly neutral position, but the shot is running too quick. Which suggests to me that I've got to allow for greater engagement of the pallets at this end. Now that's an unusual thing to have to do. It probably means that someone has altered this at some stage um, in an attempt to make the shutter run faster and that they bent this and which allow, doesn't allow the pallets to come into full engagement. That's a bit unusual. So what I'll do is I'll remove that speed train. And I will look at that. I might even try another speed train in there, another retard gear train and see how that behaves. I suspect the problem is here. Yes. Looking at this, this post here, which stops this lever, which controls how much engagement of pallets with the pallet wheel, this post is bent. It's not square. So it tells me someone's bent that. If I square that up, I'm probably going to be back in an area where I've got some adjustment range left. Getting onto it's a bit tricky. That'll, that's probably quite a lot. We'll see how that goes in the shutter. I just squared that up. I didn't do any, didn't bend it back the other way. I just squared it up because it had quite a pronounced lean on it. This should slow the shutter down. Now that didn't get bent that shape by accident. Someone would have had to go out of their way to do that. I mean it may have been as simple as someone poking a screwdriver and pushing at stuff that they've accidentally bent that. But it certainly couldn't happen by itself. The alternative is that somebody did it purposely in order to speed the shutter up. Perhaps because the main spring was so tired and exhausted. Let's see how we get on now anyway. An eighth of a second, what's that sound like? Well that's miles too fast. Let's swing this in for greater engagement because at the moment I've got it well out. That still sounds slightly fast to me. Let's try even greater engagement. I'm not sure I've got that all the way in yet. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of movement left in that. The proof of the pudding as to whether that engagement of the pallets at that end was um, was wrong is beyond the one second speed because on the one second speed if that's wrong then you'd never get out to a full second. That's still fast. But not by so much. I'll go and test those speeds, find out what I've got.
I know I was at least a full stop out earlier and I could not get it to run any slower prior to bending that arm back. I might need to bend it a bit more. Well I'm just about at the closing stage of this shutter now. The shutter speeds are working well. Um, I'm quite happy with the speeds. So I need to put in one more component in here and then I can close this up. And the component here is the little latch that stops you depressing the shutter release if the shutter isn't cocked. I'll get that in. I've got a, it's a bit fiddly getting this in. You've got to hold that tab on that spring back while you swing it into place. That looks good. Just my molybdenum paste on my speed settings cam plate just so that it turns smoothly. Like that. And I'll just put that retainer ring loosely on the front, get the outer case on, and then close up the front entirely. That's a bit reluctant to start. What's going on here? That's better. So the case. We've got our curved rack which takes the action from the shaft from the at the front of the camera and the pusher which is just the piece that the rack pushes along and the pusher in turn acts on the lever on the shutter. So I'm just running some molybdenum paste over those surfaces just very lightly. You can drop those into place in the shutter housing. I cock the shutter. I should be able to swing this into place and rotate it into place, getting my flash contact seated. That's good. Three screws at the back of the case. Where are we? Here we are. Make sure I'm staying in the picture. The other two little countersunk head screws are different diameters. You need to be careful not to mix them up. These two do not look different diameters. which might mean that someone has mixed them up in the past or it might be an optical illusion. No, it's not an optical illusion. They are the same size and someone has mixed them up in the past. They've run a larger diameter screw down at that point than it should have been there. It's fine, it's working well, but it wasn't how it should have been. Just do up this little clamp screw and flip the shutter open. We can just cock that shutter. That runs down nicely. Now, get a toothpick for running this off. Well, I've just got a piece of wood in there now. I'll have to get blow that away. That's better. Get these front rings assembled. We on the picture only just. Just run some molybdenum paste on the underside of this and the inner and outer edges. That fits into here. There's a slot in there that that tab pokes through. Get that seated. That's good. This tab on the bottom has to drop into the fork on the aperture setting lever here. Like that. Engage that with the shutter speed dial. That's all good. 
Now the lens mount section, I'm just going to run a wipe of molybdenum paste over there, that's the detents for the shutter speeds. This only sits in one position, it fits over a pin and that's correctly seated there. I've got to get the retaining ring in place. Often difficult to get this started. I think that's good. Hang on, something's gone wrong here. I'm just losing stuff. I've left something out. This piece has their aperture settings on it, so you can read them from the top of the shutter. Get this seated correctly, that's correct. Get my retaining ring started. Yeah, it's started. Tighten that down. Check my the feel of this. If it's too tight, then I need to back it up a little bit. That feels pretty good there. And I'll put the lock screw in to stop that retaining ring backing up or tightening up. This is a tiny screw and it's very short. It's awkward to get in. It's also easily lost. And with anything that's easily lost, in which there have been no spares for the last zillion years, there are no replacements. Right, so that's good. The shutter is complete. The rear grip can be screwed into place. I've already cleaned this. So the glass is nice and clean. That just needs to be finger tight. It doesn't need any more than that. And the front grip. When putting the front group in, make sure that red dot matches red dot. If you try and put it in in a different position, it's not going to go well for you. And then it's bayonets it's into place. Here we go, there's the shutter complete. The shims. We had a paper shim and a metal shim. And we want a camera body. Here's our camera body. Let's put this into position. See if I can get the timing somewhat correct. It probably was about there. Let's see if it'll cock. And fire. It does. Okay. So that was a good, good guess. Shutter retaining ring. Put that in position. Here's the tool. Tighten that up. So there we go. Zoom you out a bit. that is all that would be required if you were only doing the shutter. Of course I'm not only doing the shutter, I'm going to strip the entire camera down and service everything. But the headline problem when it came in the door was that the shutter didn't work. And now it does. So that's the shutter on a Retina 2C camera. And of course the shutter's the same on a Retina 3C or indeed a Retina 1B. Alright, thanks for watching.